air unit getting too hot. So unplug all your drones. It is getting too hot. It's going to shut my drone off. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More about them later. Hi there, everyone. The new DJI 03 air unit is about the same size as the Cadex Vista, but it consumes 40% more power because of all the new fancy silicon inside that does the 4K video encoding and the Rocksteady image stabilization. That has led a lot of people to become very worried about the overheating behavior of the new O3 air unit. And some manufacturers have even gone so far as to fit heat sinks and heat spreaders to the O3 system to help it dissipate all that extra heat. And then we're going to mount the heat sink that's going to make sure that the air unit works properly and we're not going to have any problems in flight. In this video, we're going to be taking a detailed look at the overheating behavior of the new O3 air unit and answering the question, is this new system just too hot to handle? Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. In this video, we're going to be using an infrared camera to image the air unit as it heats up. And whenever you're using an infrared camera to measure the temperature of an object, you have to be very aware of a property called emissivity and the reflected temperature of the room that you're in. And what I mean by that is that an object has this property called an emissivity, and it's a measure of how reflective that object is to infrared radiation. So let's start by thinking about a perfect black body. Now, this is an object that doesn't reflect any infrared radiation at all. So that means that no matter how much infrared light you shine on it, it doesn't reflect any of it back. And that means that when you image a black body with a thermal camera, all you're seeing is the infrared radiation that that body is emitting itself. And by looking at the intensity and the wavelength of that infrared light, you can determine very accurately the temperature of that black body. But unfortunately, most objects are not black bodies. And a good simplification that you can use when imaging an object that isn't a black body is the approximation called a gray body. Now, a gray body has an emissivity less than one. And what that means is that some of the infrared light that is incident on that object gets reflected towards the thermal camera. So here we have the room, which is at 20 degrees, and that room is emitting infrared light onto the object, and some of that infrared light is being reflected to the thermal camera. And so what the thermal camera is seeing is a mixture of the infrared light being emitted by the gray body and the infrared light being reflected by the gray body. And those two sources of infrared radiation have different temperatures. The infrared radiation emitted from the gray body has a temperature of 50 degrees, because it's being emitted from a body at that temperature. But the infrared radiation that's reflected off the object has a temperature of 20 degrees. And to get an accurate temperature of a gray body, you have to compensate for the temperature of the room, the reflected temperature, and the emissivity of the gray body. And to do that, we're going to calibrate our thermal camera first on the O3A unit and then on the Calix Vista. To calibrate the thermal camera for the O3 air unit, we're going to start by applying a thermocouple to the top of the O3 air unit, and we're going to be using some thermal compound. This is the same type of thermal compound that you would use between your CPU cooler and your CPU to get a really good thermal contact between the thermocouple and the top of the air unit. So once we've applied the thermal compound, we're going to stick the thermocouple down on the top of the air unit and that thermal paste is going to make a really good thermal contact between the thermocouple and the air unit so that we can be confident that they both are going to stay very close to the same temperature as each other. Now we're going to do a heat soak test. Now I'm using a temperature controlled hairdryer to heat the air unit and the thermocouple up to 55 degrees. And the reason that I'm using an external heat source rather than turning the air unit on is that I need the temperature to be very, very stable and I need the temperature of the thermocouple and the air unit underneath it to be exactly the same. And one really good way to do that is to use hot air at a known temperature. Then you have the hot air, the thermocouple and the air unit all in equilibrium with each other, all at a stable temperature and then you can compare the reading that you're getting with a thermal camera to the reading that you're getting with a thermocouple 
and that allows you to calibrate the emissivity. I'm also measuring the reflected temperature of the room with another thermocouple and that will give me all the information I need to calibrate the thermal camera for this air unit. As you can see, we get the thermal camera and the thermocouple agreeing very closely within a degree of each other. Now we'll do exactly the same procedure for the Calix Vista. So again, we're applying thermal compound to a thermocouple. We're going to attach that thermocouple to the top of the Calix Vista and then we're going to do a heat soak test with the hairdryer to heat everything up to the same temperature and then calibrate the thermal camera so that it's reading the same as the thermocouple and then will be calibrated. Interestingly, because the Cadix Vista is a silver anodize rather than a black anodize on the aluminium, it ends up with a quite a bit lower emissivity than the O3A unit. So that means that we will need to adjust the emissivity of the thermal camera between testing the A unit and the Cadix Vista to make sure that the temperature that we're reading is accurate in both cases. Right now, the thermal camera is not that accurate, but then if I change the emissivity, then we get much better agreement, again to within about one degree C. Okay, so now we have a well calibrated test system. Let's take a look at the Cadex Vista and the O3A unit side by side. The Cadex Vista is going to be set to 700 milliwatts, which is its standard maximum FCC power. And the O3A unit is going to be set to auto power, auto channel, but with the ham config file on it. So it's also in FCC mode as well. tell you it's gone way too far no nothing gonna help you when it falls apart the prophets and the praetors told you but you covered your ears and now the end is near gonna tear it all down So we can see that the DJI O3 system takes 40% less time than the Cadex Vista to overheat, which makes sense. I mean, 40% more power, therefore 40% less time to overheat. But what about if we enable the low power modes on both of those systems? What difference does that make? Let it all burn down in the fire Let it all 
So now we've looked at the most relevant comparisons, let's take a look at a summary of all the data and go over the conclusions. Let's take a look at the results. The worst case scenario with the O3 recording 4K at 100 frames per second with image stabilization on, it will overheat in 2 minutes and 36 seconds sitting on the bench in a 20 degree ambient with no airflow. If you're not recording but you're still at FCC power, then it's going to take 3 minutes and 13 seconds to overheat. And that's faster, significantly faster than the Vista, even at 1200 milliwatts. But if you enable low power mode on the O3, and you definitely should based on my testing, that will massively extend the amount of time before the system overheats to 7 minutes and 57 seconds, which is a really long time, and long enough that I don't think you need to worry about fitting extra fans or heat sinks to the unit. The Vista also has a low power mode, and with the Vista in low power mode, it takes more than 10 minutes to overheat, and I had to stop the test because the D-Shock beacon on my quad went off and the motor started beeping because I hadn't done anything for so long. Now remember, of course, if you are in low power mode, you are going to want to set up the MSP connection to the air unit so that when you arm the quad, it kicks it out of low power mode and up to the full transmit power. That's going to ensure that you have the range and penetration that you need when you actually go flying. This graph on the right is very handy if you live in a hotter climate where your ambient temperature is much higher than 20 degrees. If you're starting at around 40 degrees ambient, then that's going to subtract between a minute and two minutes of time from your time to overheat. So if we're at 40 degrees, we're going to be starting here, and that means that it's going to take us about a minute less to overheat. Or if we're in low power mode, somewhere between one and two minutes less time to overheat. So just bear that in mind if you happen to be flying in a very hot climate. I hope this video helps put your mind at rest about the risk of the O3 air unit overheating on the ground before you take off. I know this is an important consideration, especially for those of you planning to use O3 for professional work with Cinelifters. If you're interested in Cinelifters, you might be interested in this. This is the new AOS Cine 80, and it is an 8-inch Cinelifter designed for cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, the Z-Cam, or even a Red Komodo, both in a forward and reverse camera configuration, so you can get those chase shots with the camera facing backwards as well. It's got an ultra low vibration arm design and that helps give it vibration and resonance performance equivalent to a typical 5 inch drone. And that means that you don't need to use dampers for mounting the camera, no alpha gel for this frame. You don't get any payload vibration because you can hard mount the camera to the top of the frame. And it also makes it very, very easy to tune. And Brian White also has a PID tune for this drone as well. So if you don't want to tune it yourself, you can always use his. All of this gives the Cine 80 exceptional flight performance and it's going to be perfect for capturing those super dynamic and exciting shots that you're interested in. If you're interested in picking up a Cine 80, it's on sale now from Quad Standard Labs, both as a frame kit and a full build. And of course, there are links down in the video description. That's all I have for you for today. So I'm going to leave you with a few words from the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members from across 150 countries, all who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare is a place to get inspired, learn new skills, whether for personal growth and discovery, up-leveling skills for your business or your side hustle, or just doing some classes for self-care and relaxation. During my time with Skillshare, I've been focusing on improving the skills that I use to make these videos for you guys. So that's been photography, videography, and video editing. And from the comments that you've been leaving on my YouTube videos recently, I can tell that a lot of you are appreciating the improved quality of the videos that I'm able to produce. So I can't thank Skillshare enough for that. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can see what it's all about for yourself. A big thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.